Hi everyone, welcome to Nitranya Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we'll take a look at the game called Volfirion, which is heavily inspired by the Star Realms game, and here is how it plays. To set up the game, give each player three city cards with the defense values of 8, 9 and 10. Then each player will also get these 10 starting cards. There are 8 prospectors, 1 diviner and 1 captain. Shuffle all these cards together and form the draw deck. This draw deck is called the house deck. Then take all the remaining command cards, those are the cards with this symbol. Then all the troop cards and all the building cards. Shuffle them all together and create the asset deck. Then draw the top 5 cards from the asset deck and place them face up in a row which forms the asset row. In addition, flip the top card of the deck face up. Then shuffle the deck of wonder cards, those are the cards with this symbol. Place this wonder deck on the table and place this Wolfirian Layers card nearby. Then start drawing cards from the top of the deck and you need to place 2 cards on the Wolfirian Layer. When you draw the cards, you have to look at the number in the top right corner, which is the price of the card. You need two cards with the price 3 or lower. So if you draw the card, which has a price higher than that, set it aside and draw until you find two cards with the value of 3 or lower. Then take the cards that were put aside and put them to the bottom of the deck. Finally, take this Wolfirian Dragon token and place it near the card. So that's the end of the setup and we are ready to play. Wolfirion is a deck building game in which both players start with the initial deck of cards and over the course of the game they enhance their decks with these asset cards and wonder cards. Both players are trying to destroy enemy cities. The player who first destroys all the opponent cities wins the game. Starting with the first player, players will alternate taking turns until one of the players wins the game. One player's turn has three phases. In the first phase, the players draw five cards from their house deck. In the second phase, the main phase, players will use the abilities of those cards, both the primary and secondary abilities, to buy more cards or directly attack the cities or use the dragon to attack the cities of his opponent. In the final phase, all the played cards will be discarded. If any of the asset cards or wonder cards were acquired, empty spaces will be refilled. And if you would have a dragon in your own city, at the end of your turn, the dragon would destroy that city. Now we'll take a look at all those phases in more detail. In the draw phase, players need to draw 5 cards from their house deck. In case they need to draw 5 cards but there's not enough cards in the draw deck, take the discard pile, shuffle it, create the new draw deck and then draw the remaining cards up to 5 cards. In the first round of the game, and only in the first round of the game, if you draw 5 cards and you don't like what you see, you can take those cards, shuffle the entire house deck again. This is usually called the mulligans in the game. Then draw five new cards and with these five cards you have to play. In the main phase, after you draw five cards from the house deck, you can perform various actions. Now, first of all, you need to play your cards. To play the card, you simply place the card into the area in front of you, which is called the play area. The rules say that you can play any number of cards from your hand, which means you don't have to play all of them. However, I don't see a reason why you would not. So at the start of the main phase, simply play all your cards. Then you gain points from all the cards you have played. These turquoise points are called command points. These red ones with the sword symbol are called battle points and these purple ones with the crystal symbol are called knowledge points. 
So here we have five command points, three battle points and three knowledge points. You can only gain points once per turn from any card in play. And now it's time to spend those points. By spending command points, players can buy these asset cards. They can only buy those five cards in the asset row. The face-up top card of the deck is not for sale. In the top right corner, asset cards have the price in command points and players can buy as many as they want as long as they can pay for them. Because this player has five command points available, he can either buy the one card which costs five command points or he can buy the one card for three command points and this one for two command points, that's five together. Or he can buy this for three, for one and for one. However, you don't have to spend all the command points. If you only wish to buy the card for, let's say, these three command points, it's fine. There are three types of asset cards you can acquire. First, these are command cards. They are very similar to your starting cards, however, they have more powerful primary abilities and they have also some secondary abilities. Then the cards with this icon are troop cards. When you play this card you have to put it into one of your cities. Each city has a slot for one troop card and one building card. Troop cards provide additional defense for your cities and they also provide some secondary ability. Troop cards are permanent cards because they are placed into the city, they are not discarded at the end of your turn. The same applies for buildings, which are also placed into the cities and are permanent cards, so they are not discarded at the end of the turn. They give you these points every single turn and they can also provide the secondary ability every single turn. When you buy the asset card, the new cards are placed into the discard pile. Do not refill these empty spaces yet, it will happen at the end of the turn. If you have some battle points available, you can buy some wonder cards. The number of battle points required to acquire the wonder card is again in the top right corner. So with the three battle points available, player can acquire this wonder. Again, do not refill the empty space yet, and if you would have enough battle points available, you could acquire both wonder cards. The newly acquired wonder card is placed into the discard pile as well, however, as this symbol indicates, when you acquire new wonder card, you can completely remove from the game one card, either from the cards in play, or from the discard pile, or from your hand if you would have any cards still in hand. When you remove the card from the game, it is returned back into the box. This is very helpful to get rid of the cards which are not very effective and to thin your deck. One important note, when you remove the card from the play area, if you have already gained points from that card, you don't lose those points. If you have some knowledge points available, then for two knowledge points you can discard one of the cards in the asset row and replace it with the top deck card. So for example, I could take this card put it to the bottom of the deck and place the new card in that place. It is not possible to refill the empty spaces this way. Then flip the top card again face up. Obviously this is very useful to do if you still have some command points available and you really 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 want to buy the top deck card. Another reason for doing this might be to bury the card which might be helpful to your opponent next turn. In order to demonstrate other actions you can do during your turn, we need to fast forward several turns into the game. So let's pretend these are the five cards you would draw on your turn. Now, if you draw any buildings, as already described, they have to be placed into one of the cities. You can choose any city you want. The same applies for the troop cards as well. In case you draw and play the building card, but you don't have any free spot available, which can happen when some of your cities are already destroyed, you can replace the existing card in the city. First, you gain points from the previous card, then the card is completely removed from the game, which means it goes into the box, and then you take the new building card, and you also get points from this new building. The same would also apply for the troop cards. If you draw and play a Wonder card, this is also a permanent card and it stays permanently in the active area. 
It means it is not discarded at the end of the turn. Then calculate all the command points, battle points and knowledge points and now you can trigger these secondary abilities. These ones with these banners are called chain synergy abilities. These symbols mean that if you have any other card with the purple banner it has to be other than this one and we have such card. Then we get two additional battle points. This one says if we would have any other card with a red banner we could draw one more card from our house deck. However, there is no red card in play. This one, if we have any other blue card or card with a blue banner in play, which we have, we can draw one card from the house deck. So let's draw the card. And now, because it's a red card, this secondary ability can now be triggered because we have another card with the red banner so we can draw another card from the house deck. Of course you can add the battle points, command points and knowledge points from the newly added cards and also trigger the secondary abilities. Just remember that each secondary ability can only be triggered once per turn. Now let's talk briefly about the meaning of this symbol. These abilities are called Remove from the Game abilities. When you remove such cards from the game, you gain the depicted benefit. So in this case, you can get some battle points or knowledge points. When you remove this card from the game, you can draw and play one more card from your house deck. When you remove this card from the game, it allows you to remove one more card from the game. It's the same ability as the ability of the Wonder cards when acquired. So you can remove one card from the active area or from the discard pile or from your hand if you still have any card in hand. When you trigger this remove from the game ability, the benefit is not mandatory, it's optional. So you can potentially remove this card from the game, but if you don't wish so, you don't have to remove any other card from the game. These two abilities allow you to either remove one troop card or one building card from one of the opponent's cities. And this secondary ability, which you can only find on the Wonder cards, allow you to move the Wolfirian Dragon. It's a very powerful ability and we'll talk about it in a minute. Let me just reiterate that even if you use this Remove from the Game ability, you don't lose points from the primary ability. So if I would decide to destroy one of the opponent's buildings, I still have these two battle points available because it can be pretty difficult to track all the gained and spent points during your turn, especially later in the game, I simply use dice to keep track of the actual number of points available. If you have enough battle points available, you can try to attack the opponent's city. If you attack the city without the troop card, you need to spend as many points as is the defense value of that city. So in this case, you need to spend 9 battle points. If you do, the city is destroyed together with the building card. Flip the city card to the other side to mark that it has been destroyed. If you want to attack a city which has the troop card, you need to spend as many battle points as is the defense value of the city plus the defense value of the troop card. So in this case, you need to spend 12 battle points. However, even if you do, it's just the troop card that is destroyed but the city remains safe. You would need to spend additional 9 battle points to destroy the city now. There is another way how to attack the city. As indicated on this Wolfirian Lairs card, if you spend 8 knowledge points, you can actually move this Wolfirian Dragon. So when you accumulate enough knowledge points, even by using these secondary abilities, you can take the Dragon token from the Wolfirian's Lair and place it on any opponent city of your choice. Now, your opponent must move the Valfurian back into its lair on his very next move, otherwise the city will be completely destroyed. Even if there is a troop card in the city, the dragon destroys everything. In order to move the dragon out of the city, the player needs to spend either 8 knowledge points or he must have a card with a secondary ability that allows him to move the Valfurian. Now when you move the dragon, he can only go from the city back to the lair and from the lair to the city, obviously to the opponent's city. 
you can never move the dragon from one of your cities to one of the opponent's cities. He must always go back to the lair first. If the player would have enough knowledge points available, he could actually move the dragon from his own city to the lair and immediately from the lair to the opponent's city. But that would cost him 16 knowledge points. As indicated on the right side of this Wolfirian lair's card, if the player would be able to accumulate massive 16 battle points, he can use those points to defeat the Wolfirian. In such case, remove the dragon token from the game, and you remove it from the game even if it's in one of the cities, and then you take this lair card and it becomes one of your cities. City with the defense value of 9 and a city which provides 4 battle points every turn. So it's one more city your opponents must destroy to defeat you. From now on, because the token has been removed from the game, you cannot use the abilities that move the Valfurian token, and because there's no lair, players can no longer acquire the Wonder cards. If you need to do so, you can spend command points to redeploy your troop card into another city. You need to spend command points equal to the price of that card. So for the four command points, I could move this troop card to another city. It's a helpful action in case there is a dragon in the city and there is no way how to repel that dragon from the city and the city will be destroyed. So with a sufficient command points, I can save that troop card and put it into another city. If you have sufficient number of knowledge points available, you can seal or deactivate opponent's wonder cards. To do that, you need to spend the knowledge points equal to the number of battle points required to acquire that card. So in this case, you need four knowledge points, here you need three knowledge points. So if you do have those knowledge points available, you choose the card which opponent needs to seal. That means he needs to tap it. And now this wonder card is basically unavailable. If you would have enough knowledge points available, you can even seal multiple wonder cards. On his turn, the opponent is not able to use any of those abilities on these wonder cards, so he's not able to use these two battle points or one knowledge point, unless he spends the same amount of knowledge points during his turn, and that would unseal that wonder card. Immediately, he can get these two battle points and also use the secondary ability. If he would have enough knowledge points available, he could unseal other cards as well. At the end of the turn, you discard all the cards from the active area, and also from your hand if you would still have any cards in hand, but the wonder cards, troop cards and buildings stay in play. If you have the dragon in one of your cities at the end of your turn, that city is destroyed. Any buildings or troop cards are removed from the game. Turn the city card face down and the dragon token goes back to the lair. Then refill the empty spaces in the asset row and also on the Wolfirian's lair card if it's still in play. The game ends immediately when one of the players loses all of his cities. It could be due to the enemy attacks or due to Wolfirian attacks. Now we will cover some few exceptions to the standard rules in this game. First, as already described, only during their first turn, when players draw their first five cards, they can mulligan, which means if they don't like the cards they see, they can take all those cards, shuffle them again, and draw five new cards. Now, even if they don't like what they see now, they still have to play with those cards. Then again, only during the first round of the game and before acquiring any cards from the asset row, the player who starts the game can discard one of the cards for free and replace it with the card from the top of the deck. The discarded card goes to the bottom of the deck. Then the second player, and again only during his first round of the game, and before he acquires any card from the asset row, he can discard all those cards from the asset row for free, 
then draw five cards from the top of the deck and all those discarded cards would go to the bottom of the asset deck. And finally, if you want to add some unpredictability in this game, play with the top card of the asset deck face down. The game comes with some extra cards which provide some variance to the game and we'll go through some of them now. When you add these mercenary troop cards into the game, shuffle them into the asset deck. These mercenary troop cards can still add the defense value to the defense value of the city, so in order to attack this city, the other player needs to spend 12 battle points. However, if he does, these mercenary troops simply flee, they leave the city unguarded and the city is destroyed. The troop card is shuffled back into the asset deck. When you add the Ascension Path Wonder cards to the game, shuffle them into the Wonder deck, and when you play this Wonder, it can never be sealed, as indicated by this special symbol here. However, if your opponent pays 4 knowledge points, he can steal this card from you. Obviously, if you then pay the 4 knowledge points, you can steal the card back. When you add Saboteurs into play, shuffle them into the Asset deck, and when you play this card, as indicated by this symbol, add it to your opponent's discard pile. This symbol means that this card can never be removed from the game, and so by playing this card, you simply hurt your opponent a little bit. Then there are these four perk cards. These are meant to provide some asymmetrical experience. At the start of the game, shuffle these four cards and randomly deal one to each player. These cards are immediately revealed and each player receives a special ability given by the perk card. You can find the description of these abilities in the rulebook. And finally, there are these six ploy cards, again meant to provide some asymmetrical experience. At the start of the game, shuffle all six cards together and randomly deal one to each player. However, this time those cards are not revealed. Each player would secretly look at his own card and the card is revealed only at the moment when its condition is met. It can even happen during the opponent's turn. Immediately resolve the effect on the card and after that the card is removed from the game. Again, you can find the description of all six cards in the rulebook. So that's how you play Valfirium. If you have any questions or comments please put them into the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the series of videos, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.